Hey, welcome back everyone. Today we're going to do an update video on the Bellman CX25P Cappuccino Latte Steam Milk Frother, you name it, hot chocolate, this thing makes a lot. In the 2nd of June that I did a video on this the day after I received this so it's the first time that I've actually used this when I did that video back then so I've had a fair bit of practice now so I thought today I'll do an update video on the Bauman CX 25P espresso steamer first thing what we're going to do is we need to add water inside the Bauman there are three marks inside the Bauman to do with the water so you've got a three cup, a, I think it's a six cup and a nine cup. So I'm going to fill it up to the three mark, even though I'm only doing one cupper. I find if you lose, use less water, it doesn't seem to work as well. So it needs that volume of water, particularly if you want to use the steamer. So next what we need We'll need some coffee beans. Now beans make a huge difference. I love using these type, this bean here that's been roasted freshly in uh, Brisbane. And it's from a company called Parallel Roasters. And I particularly like this one, it's called Shifting Light. It's espresso blend and it's 60% Colombian and 40% Ethiopian. And it's got like a chocolate toffee plum taste to it. We've got some nicely fine grinded beans there now. So I'll just bring this up and show you. So hopefully you can see that. Conventional cup holder, like you're getting like in a mocha pot and so on. But it also comes with this little, like an adjuster. So, you use this by varying how much coffee you've got in here so I'm only going to use like a one or two cups of coffee so I'm going to actually set it on put it that way and what that does if you have a look I'll, I'll bring it closer so obviously you can fit more coffee in there so that's going to be a nine cup so if we got it this way that that's your six cup if you got it that way that's your three cup now that's what they say you can get out of these i find the brewers a little bit too weak so i generally find with that setting it's more like a one cup okay so if someone likes a weaker cup of coffee then you you could do the second cup for them but generally if there's two people i use the six cup version and that's around probably about 35, 40 grams if I remember. I can't crawl exactly. Um, so what you do is just gently, I like to hold my thumb over the top so the coffee beans don't go all over the place. I fill it up with water, so up to the three mark. According to the instructions, it says that you can use um, the three cups the six cup and the nine cup but I find if you if you if you use the three cup volume the coffee is too weak so I tend to use the five cup measuring or so I think it's a six cup let me see it just says here yeah it's a six cup so I use the six cup and I half that and that's enough to do three three good strong coffees now we'll add this this goes inside after you add the water you use a temp okay this is what you use a temp so you want to just press the coffee down just a tad so not too much and make sure we keep the seal clean because otherwise the water will leak out as it builds up the pressure the water will leak out in between the seals so you have to make sure you keep that free of coffee 
So I'll just go and grab a paper filter. In the kit, when you buy the Bauman, it comes with this packet of filters here. So they're an optional purchase. You can purchase these. They do advise to put the filters on the top, but there's been a few times I've actually forgotten to use the filter and I found the coffee was fine. So it, I think if you don't make the coffee beans too fine a grain, you have any problems with the, with the coffee getting into your cup. So now we seal that up. Now I like to use like a little, my little camping gas burner. Uh, now you don't have to use the little camping gas burner, you can use uh, the stove top etc. But it's just one thing you need to be aware of. We'll just start this first. There's one thing you need to be aware of because, because there's plastic. So it's got the plastic handle, it's got the plastic knob for the uh, steamer and it's got the plastic here where the uh, coffee spurts out you don't want the flame to go larger than the base of the pot now I've not seen this happen but apparently I've read online that some that have first started to use these have used too big of a flame and they've melted the plastic so the idea is just to make sure you keep the flame under so you don't need a high heat so it's not like it's a big rush or anything. This is perfect for taking, you know, when you establish camp or at home and you don't need to rush. You know, if you're traveling, you turn along the road, then I use the, uh, the AeroPress. There is a pressure gauge on here. So that gauge, when it reaches about 1.2, 1.3, then that's time to, to make the espresso. And then when it reaches around two, between two or three, that's when you can, can make do the steam in the milk. So I've got, I've got what's called a, uh, a milk jug here, and it's probably almost like half a cup of milk in there. To turn the heat up a tad, it shouldn't take too long. I, another tip is what I always do is I pre-boil the water before I put it in the, uh, that way it just makes it a lot quicker. But of course, if you're out camping and so on, you don't have to, I and mean, the water will still boil. boil on here. I just do it at home so it's a lot quicker because easy access to the kettle right there. So we'll just wait till this gets up to pressure and then we'll come back. So we're gonna make a cappuccino today. So I've got this Victoria original chocolate uh, that I like to sprinkle on top uh, of the uh, milk after it's been frothed. Now I also like to use these little coffee shots these rhino coffee gear shots and what i'll do is i'll pour out measured volume amount of espresso in each cup anyway i like to use between 50 60 mils for each cup i'll make quite a large cup and then the rest it's just the milk so this is an ideal uh, setup to take with you when you're traveling on the road I know it is to take a bit up a bit more volume than your traditional aero presses and so on but personally I think it's really worth it because the quality of the coffee the espressos and and your lattes and cappuccinos and and not just that you can also do hot hot chocolate drinks as well the quality comes out of this just it's like as if you're in a real good quality top cafe so it actually helps you save money so you don't have to keep going to the cafes all the time if you want a good quality coffee that's just reached one bar now so we're just going to wait till that goes up to another uh, point two or so on so the instruction says the ideal is when it reaches around the 1.2 1.3 bars uh, and i find that ideal now i have seen YouTube other YouTube videos where they actually re go up a lot higher than that I don't think you need to go that high I tried going a bit high and I didn't see any difference if anything I just found it was starting to sputter more and it was kind of making a bit of a mess with the pressure with too high a pressure but I like to use a high pressure when I'm frothing the milk though so I didn't generally bring that up well over two bars so that's about 1.2 now so once it gets to 1.2, I 
I'll turn that temperature down just a tap and I'll grab my cup and all you do is just turn this anti-clockwise now if you have a little bit of water out, just had a little bit of water there I'll just tip that out and there we are so that's the volume you can see the cram on that it produces so that's about 50 mils so I'm just going to go a little bit more I'm just going to make this one a little bit stronger so I'll go 60 mils I'll pour that in my cup so that's another second cup for the espresso shot I like to put the sugar into the the espresso shot now what you want to do is to get the excess steam to put the water out so, so you need you need to turn on your your steam okay so that's the steam coming out now so you don't want water into your milk you put your milk in at such an angle I say Now next time I'll do I'll do a more detailed video on this one day and I'll show you the actual process and how the milk froths up. So basically the milk the milk is just spinning around and you can see it's starting to froth up now. Now because I'm doing a cappuccino, I bring the, the end the tip of the steamer just on above the surface. And what that does is it tends to froth the milk up more. You don't want it too, too far up, otherwise it'll introduce too many bubbles. Now I, I can tell when it's ready virtually by just touching the side uh, once that. Now that's pretty warm right now, so you don't want to go too hot, otherwise you'll tend to burn the, the milk and it makes a nasty taste. So that's it. Now I'll put that aside. Now I'll remove that from the heat. Turn this off. Quickly, you want to make sure you've got a sponge nearby and give this milk froth a clean before the milk burns on there and makes it harder to clean. So it's very critical that you keep this absolutely spotlessly clean. Now we've done that. We just let out a bit of steam out. So that also assists in cleaning. And then once it cools down, you can undo the tip on the end here and also give it a clean under the tap as well. So that's the milk. So hopefully, this way, this is... So I like to... Now I'm not real good at latte, at art and so on. So there you go, that's a nice cup of... And that's it guys, that's how you make your cappuccino. And it's nice and warm too. Ah, that is so nice. So thanks for watching guys. I'm going to enjoy that cuppa now, but guys, as normal put a like if you like the video put a like if you got any questions about this just put a comment down below and i'll do my best to answer if there's any other videos you want and really appreciate it if you could subscribe it will help me out a lot so till next time thanks for watching